Um, I'm Diane Schultz. I'm the executive director of the Broome County Chamber. Lexi uh, is our membership and marketing uh, coordinator, and she set up this Zoom meeting platform for us today. So I'm jumping in and administrating that on the back end as Lexi has the day off today. So um, again, Diane Schultz, if I haven't had the opportunity to meet you, and welcome for joining us. Uh, we started webinars right when restrictions came in place uh, as a chamber, you know, we love to meet in person. We, as all of you, uh, weren't able to do that at, at the time. Um, we still are working remotely, but uh, we are open. You know, we've been working full time and we'd be happy to meet anyone via Zoom or phone or one-on-one -on -one social distancing in person. So feel free to reach out to us at any time. Really our role is um, throughout all of this is not only to promote our members most certainly and let people know about them, but connect uh, community and chamber members with tools and resources to not just address challenge challenges you know, they've faced through COVID-19, but more importantly, to really equip them to thrive and move forward and be better than ever um, going forward. Everyone's beginning to reopen or having a strategic plan to do so. And so we are providing our chamber member experts to connect um, webinar attendees with resources to help them you know, really reopen and continue to advance their business or organization um, greater than ever before. And so a lot of people um, are still working remotely, some are in, entering into the workplace, and some are doing both, and that can be a challenge. How do you communicate with your teams if, if some are remote, or some are in-house, or even everyone coming back together? So that's really our focus on today's topic. We'll also be hosting a webinar um, next Wednesday, so watch for that information. And that is going to be on um, really addressing safety concerns and how do you effectively open and have all of those items in place to really um, alleviate any concern your employees may have or your customers may have. So look for that information. If you aren't on our email list, um, give me a call. We'd love to add you to that. And we also have a large presence on social media. So follow us on social media. So without that, any uh, further information from me, um, I'm excited to introduce um, members of Consort HR that are on this call today and are really gonna be your experts in giving you information. It'll be information that you can implement and utilize in your place of business, as well as we'll have question and answer opportunities for you, you know, to ask them specific questions. So I'm excited that Beth, um, Barrick is with us today, and also Tony Richens. And so they are going to introduce themselves. Um, I am excited for them to have the opportunity to tell you more about themselves and give you that information and then uh, give an overview on Consort HR also. So without uh, further ado, Beth, do you want to introduce yourself and then introduce Tony? Or you guys can do that vice versa. <laughs> So I'll go ahead and start. Um, I'm Tony Richens, and I'm the CEO and founder of Consort HR. I've been in HR my entire career, so about 32 years, um, and it's just been wonderful. So I've led um, large enterprise companies such as Lids and Angie's List um, to Microsoft to um, st small startups in the tech community. Um, to owning a few of my own businesses. Um, so I have been, um, you know, really stayed very focused on my career in HR. And when we uh, started Consort HR, we just wanted to provide a better way of doing um, meaningful and intentional human resources for the small to medium sized businesses and giving them some options to where they can afford um, a Fortune 500 experience, but at you know a budget of a small to medium-sized business. So um, that's a little bit about me, and I will turn it over uh, to Beth. Thanks, Tony. 
Hi, I'm Beth Barich, and I work with Tony at Consort HR as the Vice President of HR Strategy and Delivery. And my role is to work with our clients on their day-to-day -day HR needs, um, from everything from creating policies and procedures to employee relations to developing a performance management strategy and process. My background is started with consulting in some traditional larger firms. I've also worked in the nonprofit sector and also in uh, large corporations doing human resources as well as within human resources, talent and organizational development. So I've been working with Tony for some time now and uh, we are just so excited to be here with everybody today and hear from you and share with you some more about what we know about engaging employees. So uh, before we go any further, I mean, we all know we've been on Zoom calls and, and webinars and inevitably something happens. I know myself, I have two, two large uh, golden doodles and labradoodles. So um, I had a talk with them this morning. I think we've come to a, an agreement that they're going to behave, but they do have minds of their own. So. If that happens, I will try to mute myself, but or we can just laugh about it together. But we'll we'll see. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Like I said, we've had a long talk this morning. <laughs> okay, everyone. Um, as Tony said, this is a great time. I know we're all doing Zooms, Microsoft Teams, and all kinds of other platforms in order to stay connected. Um, and so we want to get some feedback from you throughout the throughout the webinar today. And so we'd like to invite you to have a couple of or invite you to participate in the chat. And if you're not familiar with the Zoom platform specifically, at the bottom of your screen, in the middle, if you scroll down, there is a box that says chat. And if you open it, um, we can submit questions and reply to you throughout the, the throughout the webinar as well. So um, before we get started, we wanted to learn a little bit about you. Um, we'd like to know question. We'd like to know what industry or sector you work in. So if you can tell us that and what your role is in your organization. Are you an owner? Are you a frontline manager? Do you work in human resources? What part of your organization um, do you represent? And then the second question, we want to know a little bit more about what is your organization open during the stay at home order or were you able to be, maintain a full, a, full, um, a full staff? So we'd love to hear from you. I'll be monitoring the chat. And um, so if you want to, I'll type up those questions if you would like here. And we'd love to hear from you. So we'll give you a couple minutes. Do you have those in the chat, Beth? I do. Okay. And also, Is everyone able to? Oh, sorry. We. I just wanted to let you know we do have um, a couple of folks that uh, are joining us via their phone. Um, so I, if it's okay, they could unmute themselves and maybe say that uh, verbally if they're unable to, you know, utilize the box. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That would be great. So feel free to do that. I can see you when you unmute yourself, so we're not talking over everyone. Let's see, we have an urban designer, owner, working from home, maintained full staff. Thank you, Cynthia. FC Tucker, Zion Spell, branch manager, staff and managers are working from home. Agents are mainly working from home, but still have access to the office. Now they are back in the office. Uh, we have an owner, an HR consultant working from home, staff of one. You have to really give it to those staffs of one. They are hard <laughs> workers. They, they have so much going on. Yes, a whole staff and one person. And then like Diane said, if anybody's on the phone and would like to share, uh, feel free to unmute yourself and we would love to hear from you. I know everybody's awake and they're excited because it's Friday. <laughs> we probably have lots of weekend plans. 
Okay, we have a nonprofit executive director. Some staff have continued to work in the office while others have worked remotely. Um, demand has been down, but picking back up and locations and customers will return on July 6th, hopefully. Thank you, Anita. We can read a couple more, or if someone's on the phone and wants to share, we can give it a couple more minutes and then we will we'll proceed. Uh, we have a technology sector, the Brookfield Group, HR and compliance. Some staff are working from home, some are working in the field, and they have stayed almost fully staffed. Hi, Crystal. Thanks, Crystal. We work with Crystal. All right, well, let's move on and we'll get started. So thanks for sharing all of that. So here's our agenda today. Uh, we're going to set the stage. We're going to talk about purpose and legacy. We're going to talk about ongoing re-engagement um, and then what it looks like looking forward. And then hopefully at the end, all of us can do a Brady Bunch screen and uh, we can have uh, some questions and some collaboration and then get on with our weekend. So setting the stage, we wanted to give uh, some business impact stats. So as you can see on here, 40 plus million uh, people have filed unemployment claims since March, um, 2 trillion in stimulus funding through the CARES Act, 14.8% Hoosier projected to experience job loss, and then 20 million workers will likely be uh, laid off through furlough. So obviously we are in unprecedented times for all of us. I know that I haven't ever experienced anything like this in my lifetime. Uh, in talking to my mom, she's never experienced anything like this in her lifetime. We would actually have to go back to uh, probably my grandmother if she was still alive and ask her some, some questions. And I think that that would probably be a very uh, interesting conversation. Knowing my grandmother, it'd be very interesting, I think. So one of the things um, I would kind of like to lead out with is that from all the people that I've talked to, all the companies that I work with, and then they start coming out of the woodwork and start calling because they need advice and they need, you know, sometimes they need to just vent because they're feeling very alone and they're feeling somewhat a level of grief. So in the spirit of sharing and coming together on this webinar, I would like to share something with all of you. So last April, April 1st, we opened up Consort HR Beth, Allison, and myself, and we had, we were just gung-ho. We had all of this energy and excitement, and then <clears throat> 26 days later, uh, my husband very unexpectedly passed away, and we were left with coming together as three women starting to build this company to figure out can we still build it? And we all felt a tremendous um, level of grief. And, and these two ladies have been by my side through this whole last year. But to start a company and 26 days later um, lose my husband was uh, very, uh, well, unexpected. So, I think that when people are going through something like this, such a big change, and something like this has impacted how we live, how we work, and everything has changed overnight, you really start to understand the mental part of all of this. So when you think about how has this impacted your business, and you start uh, thinking about your clients and, and your internal clients and your external clients, you know, you really have to start thinking about what does this stage look like? 
And that could look, that looks so much, so different for so many different people because you don't know what they're going through inside their homes. You don't know if they have, if they're caring for someone that's ill, if they're, if they've been one of these people that have <clears throat> lost their jobs, um, if, if they have got their stimulus check, if they even get one. So all of these things sets the stage for how they move forward, both personally and professionally. So I share my story because I think it's important to understand that even though tragedy happens, there is still a path forward. And we need to remember this as we're going through all of these iterations of how we're going to look forward. So I can tell you uh, personally that, you know, if someone would have told me, I've told Allison and Beth this a couple of times. The first time, I don't think they know how to react. The second time we all laughed about it. But if somebody would have told me, you're gonna open your business and 26 days later, your husband's gonna pass away. And then within 10 months, there's going to be a pandemic. I would have told them that they needed to seek some counseling. Now I would probably go and buy a lottery ticket because I think I would win. Um, so I guess the, the point of all this is, is that even though we're going through all of these emotions and what's happening in our personal lives and that, that impacts our professional lives, there is a road to, to recovery. And we all just need to help each other find out what that road is. So. I just want to thank you for listening to my story for the last 12 months. And, um, and then on this platform, uh, personally thank Beth and Allison for hanging in there with me. And because uh, it, it hasn't all been roses. And uh, these two ladies came out of the woodwork and said, we got you. So that's just, that's just another plug for women supporting women. And, uh, and here we are. So our next slide is talking about purpose and legacy. And this is thinking about, you know, what is your why? What was your why before this happened? What is your why in while this has happened? And then how are you gonna move forward? So if you can think about what kind of employer have you been? What kind of employer do you want to be? And what kind of employer are you going to be? Because there's a difference between this is the employer that I want to be. However, I have to put in these interventions to make that happen. And a lot of times that falls on HR. Sometimes in companies, HR has a seat at the table and we can be influencers. And then sometimes we don't have that seat at the table and we have to be campaigners. So we have to go out, we have to um, get our allies, we have to have them campaign with us for what we want to have happen because we know that it's going to, to be better for the company and for the employees. So if you think about, you know, the choices that are made now will define who you are and make an impact on your brand and on your business and on your identity going forward. Um, you know, how open are you to letting go of what used to work and really starting to be intentional and think about, did what used to work, did it really work? Or was it just was it just kind of functioning? So you know now more than ever, perhaps employees are looking at employers to see how they're going to respond to this crisis. You know, will the narrative change? And did what used to work? Did it really work? So I would think in order to determine who you are in the company is mid and post pandemic, you have to crystallize your purpose, your identity and what you'd like your legacy to be. You know, what is my story? What, what story am I gonna help write for this company or for myself? Um, compassionate employers lead to compassionate employees and you know, flexibility is the key. And I'll give you an example. And maybe some of you have already read this, but um, Airbnb, their CEO sent out a 3,374 word, uh, communication as we will call it. I think I call that a term paper, um, but it landed very, very well. And um, he addressed their employees with an empathetic tone 
showcasing uh, you know, a passion for the company and the care for the workforce. And it included detailed background about the financials, which you hardly ever see. Um, but he wanted to be very transparent. Um, he wanted to, to have clarity on how severance is going to work and how the total reward initiatives are going to work, how they're going to be taken care of, how they're going to take care of their families. And it also included such gratitude and inspiration that he himself acquired through his employees, through what they were going through. So I think when you start to think about all of this and you have a CEO of this huge company that is basically showing vulnerability, you, you start creating trust. And, and even if they're being separated from the company, and they're doing it intentional and they're taking care of them, um, either through monetary means or uh, mental illness and therapy. I mean, all that's happening right now. So he did both. He took care of them through monetary means. He set up therapy sessions. He elongated um, how they could uh, stay on their health insurance plan. Um, it was just really, it was something i i read the whole thing and and i've actually read it twice i would recommend if you haven't read it too um but now that we've put some intention behind you know your purpose and then what you'd like to be known as an employer let's talk about you know how do we move forward in doing this so allison um found this great quote from mckenzie that said Return is not a phase, it's a way of operating. And I think that we all have to start thinking about it in that way because it's not gonna be a phase one or a phase two or a phase three. This is gonna be a new way of how business is done. Um, and it's, it's going to change and we're gonna have to pivot with it if we want to be, I'll just use the word remarkable because I think that that's what we all want. So I really like this quote that she found and we, we wanted to, to add it in to the discussion today. So knowing that, I mean, uncertainty doesn't end with reopening. It will continue for months and years. Um, and the onset of this pandemic, you know, in a new world where we need to create an intentional way of operating, we all just need to figure out what that means for us personally and what that means for our businesses. So in taking that into consideration, this is what we're going to talk about today. So ongoing re-engagement. I can tell you that we're, we're trying not to use the words new normal because a lot of the surveys are coming back and saying that that is creating just a lot more of anxiety um, because it's a, just a vast reminder of things will never be the same again. So we have to start talking in a different way to where we can say, you know, this is an ongoing re-engagement. We are going to develop ourselves in a different way. And maybe that's the silver lining that's coming out of this because we have a real opportunity to do things differently and make it meaningful to where before, Maybe we could say, yeah, it was working, it was okay, but now we have an opportunity to, to make it even better. So if you think about gratitude, purpose and goal setting, reflecting and revising and rewarding and recognizing, all that creates, and it's, it's done through transparency, consistency and clarity. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So we'll start with gratitude and we put a little sidebar in there that says the power of thank you. And I think that we, we can all probably say that, you know, we treat our employees well and uh, we say thank you and, you know, we recognize what they've done for the company. Um, but sometimes we, we, we forget um, or we think, oh, you know, they know. But during this time, gratitude is gonna be just so important. Um, you know, messaging from all levels of management and with sincerity and humility and empathy and being authentic and intentional. These are all words that we probably think about every day. 
Um, but even more so now during this, it's just all the more important. So we've put some um, of the hows on how to do this through like town halls, virtual and in person. Um, some people are doing welcome back letters to their employees. Um, some people are doing writing letters to their employees while they're still working remote, just to check in, see how they're doing. Um, some people are doing videos um, from recognized leaders of the companies and employees just to check in. Um, I don't know how a if a lot of people are doing engagement surveys um, during this time, but definitely they'll be doing them, you know, after re-entry. Um, and then on the spot recognition. I mean, that's that's going to be important too. And that can be, you know, during a Zoom call, just making someone feel valued and saying thank you. So I've, I've done a little bit of research and um, according to one study done, and I, I, I lifted this from SHRM, um, in March, one third of the US workers were struggling with mental health issues, ranging from moderate distress to serious mental illness. Um, and all of that is coming out of a lack of control, which feeds into anxiety. Um, and I'll give you an example of what I mean by that. So, um, so unlike a natural disaster um, where there's an endpoint and then followed by a cleanup um, or a recession uh, where experts can predict uh, recovery based on economic downturns and they have all this data, um, this has created a situation where we just don't know what's going to happen. There's, it's, it's, it's what I would call blue sky. You look up and you just don't know when it's gonna end. You don't know what it's gonna look like. You don't know if we're gonna have a second round. There's just so much blue sky out there to look at. There's just not an end, which that feeds into anxiety. Um, and people are experiencing this on an unprecedented level. So now is the time to show the power of value, not only the value as we can, as we are as companies, but, the val but their value to the company and how much they mean to the company. Um, and we can do that in all kinds of different ways. And maybe some people can share in the chat some of the ways that they have done this um, and would just give us a lot more information uh, uh, and ideas about how, how we can um, make sure that we are on top of gratitude. So the next one is the purpose and goal setting. And I think that for this, we have identified that clarity is key. So if you start thinking about, um, you know, are we aligned on our purpose and our message? And during this time, we're all getting a little bit fatigued. You know, either we have Zoom fatigue as we're on a Zoom call right now, um, or we have webinar fatigue, or we're trying to stay in touch with everyone through different means of communication. But as this has gone on, I think we're, we're all just getting a little bit tired. And you can see it even on LinkedIn. I know that I've noticed on my LinkedIn, and I'm sure we all have you know, hundreds of, or if not thousands of connections, it's just a little bit less every day. And I think that that is because everyone's just getting a little bit fatigued. But I've pulled some stats here um, about the different generations and millennials are struggling more than more than Gen X um, or the baby boomers to get their work done amid this pandemic. Um, they're also reporting higher levels of anxiety and sleeplessness than the baby boomers and Gen Xers according to two surveys. Um, only about 60% of millennials said that they feel either productive or more so while working remotely compared to 67% of Gen X and 72% of baby boomers. And I think that's just the difference in how we do work. Um, but millennials also said that they felt less connected to their employers. 60% um, said that they were more anxious compared to roughly 56% of Gen X and baby boomers. And then a study by uh, Vitality Group, they're a Chicago-based health and wellness firm. I don't know, some of you may be familiar with them. 
but they did a study and they found that millennials are sleeping and exercising less uh, than, uh, than Gen X or baby boomers amid this crisis. So I think once we start thinking about all of those things, and intuitively, I think that when I started reading these stats, I would have thought that, you know, the millennials would have been able to work in this kind of new environment with a lot more, um, I guess, success than Gen X and the baby boomers. But the research shows that that actually is, is quite opposite. And I think when we start thinking about working remotely, and I think this, this you know, these generations have come up and, and they, they want to do more remote work. But I think where we have, um, what we need to think about is that remote work for them didn't mean necessarily working from home. They worked in cafes or they worked in parks with, with coworkers and they were still socialized. And now they're working from home in a very isolated environment. So where we think that, well, why wouldn't they feel comfortable and why wouldn't they feel connected because they want to work from home or re work remote. But like I said, that doesn't necessarily equate to them working from home because they were more used to working outside of the house. Even myself, and I'm Gen X, I mean, even, I started liking working in cafes and I don't even drink coffee. Uh, but it was, it was fun, you know, doing people watching and, and uh, getting a lot done and talking with people and meeting people that you didn't know. Um, and, and another survey found that nearly half of millennials say that, that communicating with colleagues have been difficult during the pandemic. Um, a survey commissioned by software maker Smartsheet, some of you may be familiar with them, found that millennials uh, are finding it hard to get status updates on their work compared to 40% of their older colleagues. Um, Gen Z, who were born after 97 and are new to the workforce, um, they're saying the same thing. It's hard for them to get status updates. Um, so I think we still have a reason to have purpose and goal setting. There's still a reason to reach out and to say, you know, are you on track with this project? And giving them really good solid feedback on that and through, through goal setting and accountability. And I think that when I've talked to a lot of people that I know, it's been hard for them to do that um, because they, they feel just so disconnected. So I think keeping that in mind that there's still a purpose to get up every day and to work. There's still goals that we have to make. We're still accountable, but we have to do it very intentionally. And I think that, that we're struggling with that piece. So clear and consistent, transparent, and frequent messaging and communication is going to be the key to really getting this done and having open dialogue with employees and not making, um, you know, those other generations that come, you know, behind Gen X, my generation, making it easier for them to feel connected, to have feedback. Um, so I think that we're struggling with that. So some of the ways that we can do this is to have regular company and team meetings. I know that some companies are falling a little bit short having total team meetings, but don't disvalue um, what a team meeting can do, you know, just on a, a Wednesday or Thursday afternoon, uh, because it can really fill in those gaps of that isolation. So, um, and then fireside chats, uh, virtual, you know, in-person social distancing, or, you know, have a buddy program, you know, start that in, in your organization. So at least they have one person that they have a touch point to every couple of days and they're checking in to see how they're doing and to ask them if they need help with anything and you know, getting a status update on their work and sharing their work with them. Just keeping the communication and the dialogue going so, they, so no one feels alone during this. I know that, a, everywhere is saying, you know, we're all in this together. And I think that's true. We are all in this together, but it's different. 
and it's different for everyone in the way that they're feeling. So it's, it's going to be really important that we understand how we can best help our colleagues and what that help looks like to them. Um, so some of those uh, that we have put on here, maybe you're already doing or you want to share in the chat if you're doing something different and what the impact has been, um, maybe we can, we can learn how we can uh, put different things in there too. Tony, we've heard from a couple of participants about some things they've been doing. They've had some early morning stretch and exercise classes that have been on the clock. There have been DQ, Dairy Queen treat cards that have gone out. Um, some have done daily uh, Teams, which is another platform for communicating meetings so they can join and just say hi and check in. They've done virtual cookouts and cocktail hours. Um, and then a new employee of the month. I would like to be invited to that. I know. Cocktail hour. <laughs> I think all those are great things. I love the DQ. I mean, everyone feels better <laughs> after ice cream. Those are really great. And then, you know, we can share all of this, um, you know, through email or, or whatever communication that's available to us, all these great ideas. But I love it that, you know, all these people are, are doing these things because it's just so important. So thanks for sharing that, Beth. You're welcome. So as we go on to reflecting and revising, this is all about creating consistency. And I think that consistency is what is going to win this game. Um, I was talking to Allison and Beth yesterday and I said, I've noticed on LinkedIn, because that's the primary platform that I'm on, I've noticed on LinkedIn, and maybe some of you can, can give your feedback in the chat, if you've noticed the same thing or not, but when this first started, there was a, just a lot of communication on LinkedIn around um, all of these great ideas and there were so many webinars and there were so many, you know, fireside chats and things like that. And as the time has rolled on, I've noticed that those have become less and less. Um, and maybe it's just on my feed and you're not seeing that. Um, but consistency is, is going to be key to this and establishing, you know, timing and, and, and frequency of check-ins and encouraging a consistent two-way dialogue, um, providing support and space to make mistakes. And I, you know, that's a small sentence, but it has a really big impact because I think as we're so disconnected and we're feeling connected, when we do make mistakes, it's even that more prevalent that where we're feeling like, well, I haven't talked to my boss in a couple of weeks and now I've made an error on this project. I wonder what they're thinking. I wonder if my job is secure. They're just wondering. It feeds into anxiety, which feeds into depression. And it's just this visual, this, this cycle. Um, so I think that providing us a, a, a safe place and platform for them to make mistakes, for them to be able to talk through that, whatever happened, and to know that, you know, this isn't gonna change anything, everyone makes mistakes and it's okay. Um, and then identifying what's working and what's not and adapt the goals as needed and then re-communicate. I can't stress, I had a conversation with someone in New York last week and she was pretty emotional on the call and she's just going through a lot. And she's also a consultant. And uh, she's been a consultant for about a year now. But she does a lot of coaching uh, where I do a lot of employment law. She does a lot of coaching and she's just finding it very hard to, um, you know, to communicate and to stay relevant and, and to reach people. And she said that she really felt disconnected and, um, was wondering if her business was even going to make it. Um, so I think that it doesn't really matter where we are in our careers. We're all feeling the same thing on a different level. So on the how box we put down here is to continue the one-on-one -on -one meetings and don't discount the performance management applications because they want feedback. They want to be able to talk through what we're doing or what they're doing and, um, and then having a company benchmark for communication and follow-up 
And I think that it's very important that we get our senior leaders involved. And even though they may be feeling a lot of fatigue because they have their job to do, plus most of them have a lot of direct reports that they have to keep communicating with themselves, they're feeling it as well. So my, my advice is that you cannot over communicate during this time of uncertainty and, and in a daily change. It's not even a weekly change now. I mean, we all have some kind of app that has news and it's, you cannot get away with it. So establishing a cadence of ongoing and meaningful touch points with employees is just critical for their success. And I think that we're gonna feel better as well. So consistency is definitely the name of this game and it's proved to be challenging for everyone, but we just need to start keep working at it. Um, so as your team members, you know, ask them what is working for them and what is not and adapt to that. So this will create a foundation for success. So whatever is not working for them, to have that meaningful two-way dialogue to, to find out what will work for them and then adapt to that is going to keep them going. So senior leaders have to be available. But however, let's, you know, keep in mind that, you know, this creates additional stress for them as well. And they're not immune to what is happening. So we can't forget them. I mean, some companies are offering, I did a little bit of research, what companies are offering out there as far as um, to their employees. And they're offering well-being coaching sessions, 24-7 uh, virtual access to counselors uh, under the health insurance plans. Some companies have even gone to no Zoom meetings on Friday. So Friday is just a work from home, you know, maybe go mow your lawn, maybe start that cocktail happy hour a little bit earlier, um, just have done away with the Zoom meetings on Fridays. Um, and then there has been, uh, and you can, I can't see the chat, so Beth, you can let me know, but um, how many out there have heard of the mindfulness app called Headspace? I think you're muted, Beth. Yes, we've heard, some people have heard of it, yes. Okay. So they have, just in the last three months, they have increased by 400%. And I think what this tells us is that people are reaching out and looking for, for uh, solutions to help them get through this. Um, and then lastly, and like I said before, you know, don't forget about performance management during this time, because it could be as simple as discussing a one-off project and the outcomes related to that project. So the goal is to just keep talking and adapting as needed. You know, everyone needs positive feedback during this time and their fears put to rest uh, about how they're doing under these new circumstances. And really a simple phone call, I, I know we don't do phone calls much anymore, but a simple phone call could make the difference between whether they're gonna have a really bad week or whether they're going to have a really great week. So, you know, reflecting and revising how we're doing things and adapting to what is going to help them the most is really what we should be focusing on. And hopefully, you know, people have already started doing that um, during this time. So we're going to move on to uh, rewarding and recognizing. And I think this goes on to what we were just talking about and recognizing accomplishments and milestones. And this is about employee engagement. So everything that we've been talking about today is about employee engagement. Um, be specific and timely and showcase positive development ideas and adapt to recognition to your audience. Um, we, on the how box, we've put non-monetary and monetary rewards, acts of service, Skip level recognition. I can't say enough about that because if you, if your boss's boss reaches out to you and says, 
I was talking to John and he was letting me know what a great job you were doing. If you have skip level recognition, you are gonna have a good day. Uh, it's just, it goes without saying. It, this was pre-pandemic, post-pandemic, you're gonna have a good day. I um, mean, and, and then celebrations at the company, but you know, clear, consistent goals, regular communication, and a culture of recognition and appreciation will allow for an engaged organization every time. Because let's face it, I mean, the needle is shifting in regard to recognition and normalization of mental health concerns. And understanding the employees or the employers need to address this more so now. I mean, even before the pandemic, some businesses had woken up to the fact that, hey, we need to prioritize our well being initiatives. But now, anxiety and depression, where they were present before, people are starting to care about it more. And I can tell you the stigma of having, you know, anxiety. Uh, and in some level of mental health issue, that stigma is fading fast. And we as employers have to recognize we have it, we need to help, and we need to put in interventions that will push this along. So like I said, we're, we're all in this together, but differently. We need to be aware that you know it's different for everyone and rewarding and recognizing comes in different ways for different people. We just need to figure out what that means to that individual and adapt. So in looking forward, I mean, we're gonna have to prepare for a long road, provide support. You can read you know, the other things on the slide, but here are the, are the three th takeaways that I have and that our leaders are thinking about is how do we adapt our business and strategy and how do we innovate in this new market? That's first and foremost, because we have to keep going. The second one is how do we do more or at least the same with less because we have less resources? And then three, how do we keep our team healthy? And by that, I mean both physically and mentally. And how do we help them move forward through this with us? So we're talking about innovation, productivity, and avoiding burnout. And all this equals, and it goes back, it ties back to employee engagement through communication, transparency, and empathy. Empathy is, is the, the main word there. We, we're gonna have to uh, really dig deep even when we're tired and we're, we're fatigued. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Um, I'll open this up for questions and I don't know if we want to change the screen. In order to do that, uh, Diane, do I need to stop sharing? You do. See, you got it. I tell you, I am just getting better at this every day. Wait, wait till I uh, tell Lexi that, you know, we, we were all okay. Yes. Lexi, joined on, <laughs> but Lexi joined on this morning, even though she was off today, just to make sure we all knew what we were doing. <laughs> when, when, when Lexi left, I was very nervous. But hey, I think we did okay, right, guys? I mean, yeah. we did it. It's just a yeah. few buttons. Just a few buttons. So, anyway, I you know I hope you found value in what we talked about today. But I would like to open it up to hear some of your feedback. And if people want to share, you know, what are some things that were challenges before? Uh, you know, the whole restrictions of COVID-19, maybe what they're facing now and reopening, but success stories. I've heard so many wonderful success stories, how people have um, really adapted and, you know, maybe transitioned and pivoted the way they were doing business or the way they were communicating, um, you know, with their team and, you know, just uh, how, how that can even be positive and stronger than it was before that communication. Um, I do have one board member on here, but I'm just going to give a little shout out. I think it's uh, Anita Bowen is one of my board members, but um, I think it was the first time uh, that I had all of my board members at a board meeting and it, it was virtually, but every single one of them was there, you know, so, so that was very positive. Sometimes it's difficult to all meet in person, you know, so maybe that's something that we need to continue, you know, to look at to do on an occasional basis. 
um, if that works best for people's people's schedules. Um, you know, a couple of things we've never done, like I said, webinars like this, we will continue to do so because not everybody can come to an event and, and sit in a seat at an event. So, um, you know, we're kind of looking at that schedule because that's, you know, it's not just staff, but you have to have different ways to communicate with your clients or if you're an organization, your members. So really, you know, it made us dive in and see how we can continue to do what we're doing, but do that differently. And we've been able to have great presenters like Tony and Beth and Allison today and, you know, share um, some of their expertise and their business. So that's a good, a good way to do that. Um, I do miss seeing everyone in person. So I look, look forward to the opportunity that we can all gather together, but Maybe if you guys want to share some of those items, feel free to jump in. We have um, um, one of our, Cynthia was telling us about they're doing happy hours. Um, they're, they're also planning to meet up at one of their projects, which I assume is an outdoor project, um, a park where they can be socially distant, bring on their own lunches and just hang out together and see one another. Um, she and her partners try to call staff and check in with different people every week. Um, they also try to get their entire staff engaged on Friday. Um, some of them keep their cameras off, which is, we, as we know, it can be hard. Um, and, um, but um, people are enjoying having set times for team meetings, project meetings, project management meetings and partner meetings and staff meetings. So um, having some consistency there of time and uh, participants seems to be helping them as well. Yeah, that's really great. They're doing a lot. Yeah. So I have a question. I don't, I don't mean to put you on the spot, Carrie, but you know, since you just started your consulting company, how, how's your, your experience been starting a company in the middle of a pandemic? Yeah. So, you know, it's in some ways it's been kind of a blessing, um, mainly because, you know, everybody is now working remotely is so well embraced that, you know, making contacts and scheduling um, time to, to meet with people has been a lot easier because everybody's home and not doing anything. But then again, you know, part of it is, is that building trust and um, usually you do that over what, like coffees and lunches and, you know, in-person meetings. And so since that hasn't happened, it's been, that part of it has been very difficult. So where you could have, you know, reached out to somebody and said, hey, I want to, you know, sit down and meet with you for, you know, a few minutes, maybe over coffee, like that just, that just went on the wayside. But I will have to say from an HR standpoint, you know, a lot of times talent strategy has been put on the wayside. So as companies are reopening and, and all of these HR issues that have come up, it seems to be like, you know, HR is the ones that, you know, the department that people are leaning on, like, how do we communicate this? What are we going to communicate? How do we, you know, re-engage? What should we do? So the spotlight has really been for, um, for that profession to, you know, finally get the limelight I think that they've deserved for a long time. So. I agree with that. I, I think that this is a real opportunity for HR to finally be looked at as strategic and not just um, administrative like some companies have done in the past, that they've really had to lean on their HR departments uh, oh during God. all of this. There was a bird that just flew into my- I was say, is that a bird? <laughs> oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> First. Well, we said something was gonna happen. <laughs> And you know what? We only have one minute left. We you barely <laughs> made it. Have you ever had that happen, Carrie? Do you have a screen? Yeah, just and I cracked door. the door open because the dogs and this thing's looking at me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you have a fishing net? <laughs> Does anybody know? Okay, see, uh, as a yeah. chamber, 
as a chamber, we are a solution seeker for, for our members, helping mm -hmm. them with their biggest challenges. As, does anyone know how to remove a bird from your inside of your house? Maybe get a coat and kind of wave it. Usually you can get like a broom in a box and just kind of like, <laughs> boop, 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 kind of like, you know? Oh my God. Or you can get a cage and keep it. Oh my gosh. I am so sorry. Do you have someone home with you, Carrie? I, do. I am going to go get my husband right now. <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining us. Any last questions or excitement? <laughs> <laughs> I love that and that is a story to tell. It is. It is. And the best thing is we are recording this, so it will be on the YouTube channel. <laughs> We're gonna make you famous, Carrie. Yes, one way or the other. <laughs> Well, I would just like to say on behalf of Allison and Beth and myself, Consort HR, we know your time is valuable, so we thank you for spending some time with us today and let us um, learn from you, and hopefully you learn something from us, and thanks for participating, and, uh, you know, maybe we'll do this again. This was really great, and Diane, thank you, thank, you, know, thank you for having us. Thank you oh, so much, Diane. Well, well, it's been great, and I know you, you guys and your team have uh, been wonderful. You've able, been able to present um, before uh, for a Women Inspiring Women and Women of Impact event, and we were able to do that in person. But this is a great platform, and I'm just laughing at Carrie. Now Sorry, I see your bird <laughs> flying around. It flew out. It just yeah. flew out. It did. Yeah. It, it wanted to be a part of the fun. <laughs> 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 and connect. So um, feel free, who's ever, you know, still on here today, as well as listening to the recording of this, you know, reach out to Tony and Beth and Allison. Um, you know, they're there. I know everybody's answering questions at this time. If you just want to make a complimentary call, just to briefly ask them a question, um, they'd be happy, you know, to do that. And most importantly, as Tony said, and I've heard this from so many businesses, um, you know, our, one of the short sources that they have uh, is time. So I always uh, empower folks to, you know, make those connections and utilize the people that that can help them um, really take some of those tasks off off their hands. So. You know they can do business uh, you know that is best to their skill set too perfect so all right have a great weekend everyone you too you yeah. too thanks everyone great thanks. seeing you bye. thank you bye, bye everybody bye